Many of you know our friend Anita Moncrief. She is one of my heroes. Um, she has become a dear friend and she's also become an ally and someone that I call and because I trust her. I know that when Anita tells me something, um, it, it's fact. And so, and she's got my back. And I can tell you in this movement, to have friends and have allies and have true people that you know have your back, it means the world. And so um, she's, she's an amazing woman. She's known as the acorn whistleblower. Um, she's an expert in voter fraud. And, and we talked about, those of you that just came in, we talked about that what happened over at the Capitol just a little while ago, um, we need to focus on the corruption in Texas politics. And one of the things that was exposed in this last uh, general election is the corruption in the Republican Party that allows for voter fraud to happen. And besides the, the corruption in the, Repu uh, the Democrat Party. So I want to welcome you, my good friend, my colleague, and um, Anita Moncrief. Thank you, Alan. Alice. I am really happy to be here today. Um, as there's not really anywhere I wouldn't go for Alice Lanahan, so I'm very happy to be here. Um, one of the things I want to talk to you guys about before I get started um, is how I got here. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, you're the Acorn whistleblower, Acorn's dad, we got them out in 2010. And uh, last night I got a Google alert and I was like, hmm, Acorn. So I looked up and um, I had known that Acorn was in Canada and in Indonesia and what I didn't realize and I never bring my phone up here, but I had to take a screenshot. I was just appalled. Acorn is also in the Czech Republic, South Korea, Honduras, Mexico, Kenya, Canada, Ecuador, and let me go, keep going, Italy, Peru, and Argentina, and the Dominican Republic. That's where Acorn is. Think about that. Not just here in the United States, because they are still here. Their new group is called, hold on, Advocates and Actions, advocatesandactions.org. If you go there, you will see a lady in an acorn t-shirt protesting. And it's the same group starting all over the country once again with a new head. Acorn hasn't gone anywhere. That's why in the past election you saw so much fraud, but you didn't really see it. You knew it was happening all over the place, but you couldn't put your finger on it. I was in Cincinnati, Ohio, I'm sorry, Cleveland, Ohio, on election day. After they had 30 days of early voting. Who needs 30 days of early voting? But um, I could feel the fraud going on around me, but I could not prove it. It's because they had, had 30 days to commit it. So on election day, turnout was low in the minority communities. Uh, Obama was off playing basketball and uh, Organizing for America was partying. So I go over to the Romney campaign. That was the saddest thing I had ever seen in my life. There was uh, dozens and dozens of uh, volunteers and activists sitting around the Romney campaign eating sandwiches and bemoaning the fact that Orca was down and they didn't know what to do. They did this for about three hours and then they decided that they were going to pull out paper walk list. They gave these people paper walk lists and sent them out into the communities to get out the vote. Now, compared to the iPhones and the apps and everything else that the Obama campaign has been using for years, there we are out there with a few scraggly organizers with paper walklets when we say the election was stolen. The election just wasn't stolen by fraud. It was stolen by incompetence. It was stolen by um, this this. I don't know how to say it. I'm just going to say it. this cocky attitude coming from the Romney campaign. How can you have a billion dollar system that you don't even test until election day? How can you let something like that just crash and burn and all those people left with nothing to do? We do not have a ground game on the right. We do not know how to organize. We do not know how to fight back. 
all these things I was thinking and looking around. I'm like, how do you say these things to people who have, you know, given up time with their families, who put in their money and their, you know, expect, you know, done all these things for our country? But there's no other way to say it. Our party has failed us. It wasn't you guys. You did the best you could. But who gave you a direction? Who gave you a plan? Who said that this is the pathway to victory? This is the way to win. No one. They ignored the grassroots. They embarrassed us at the National Convention. And they acted like we didn't exist and that we were the red-headed stepchildren of the movement. <laughs> that time is over. Those people in Washington do not represent the party. When I think about the Republican Party, when I think about conservatives, I think about you and you and you. That's the face of the party. But when I look on TV, I see Banner, who looks like he's drunk. I see McConnell. I see, um, what's his name, Cantor. Those are the people that are representing us. And I'm sorry to be so blunt, but they do not represent me. They do not represent the true spirit of this party. You do. And if people like you got out there and people saw you on TV and they saw you as a representative of the party, do you think they would always be able to call us racist and evil and rich white guys in suits? No, they wouldn't. But they don't let us get out there. They don't want to let us represent them. So it's time for us to take back our country the real way. We have been through a battle. I know you guys thought it was the war, but that was the battle. We're in the war right now, and we don't even realize it. We have to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and get ready. The next step is going to come with us learning how to organize. And I know Obama's made organizing a bad, you know, giving it a bad name, but think about it. His only skill was being a community organizer, and now he's running the country. We have to go in and take back our country block by block. That means going into the neighborhoods, talking to our people, because think about it, three million people didn't vote. Three million people thought that they couldn't vote for Ronnie, so they would just stay home. So we don't need you to just jump up and automatically go start knocking on doors in Sheila Jackson Lee's district. We need to start talking to your neighbors. You become the trusted community messengers. Become the people that folks listen to. And then we can start outreaching to other communities. But right now, we need to get ourselves together. We need to unite within this movement. As my friend Matt Armstrong will tell you, he's been out there and he's seen the infighting and the kicking and the, I don't want to share my list and I don't want to share this and it's just not going to work that way people do you really think that the gays and the well, the women's rights people and the the PETA people get along they hate each other but they know enough to get together and get their guy elected they're smart they are collectivists they are coalition builders they make their voices seem louder than they are there are more conservatives and more people in the middle of the road than there are these far leftists but you wouldn't realize it because all their voices are screaming at the same time that's what we have to do we and another thing is branding when leftists and uh, Democrats became a bad word, they became progressives. Have you guys noticed this progressive word that's been coming up? If conservative and Tea Party is a bad word, maybe it's time to change the narrative. We can be anything we want. We can be, a, I know we're Americans, number one. I know as Catherine Engelbrook said last night, it comes down to good and evil, but we really need to work on branding because that's another thing. We let them tell us who we are. We let them tell us how we're, uh, how we're defined. And I'm tired of it. I feel like if there's anything, conservatives and Republicans need a coming out party. I'm serious, guys. It's time to stop defending yourselves. Come out and be bold. I am proud to love America. I'm proud to love my family. I am proud to serve this country. We need to stop defending ourselves. There is no reason for us to defend against our values. They need to defend against the fact that they have no values. That's where we need to change the narrative. So as we're going forward, be energized. They didn't beat us. They just outsmarted us. They just went around and they, they worked harder and smarter. So while we were out there trying to figure out how Orca was going to work or how we could get involved in the Romney campaign, we should not have been worrying about the campaigning for Romney. We should have been out there organizing people to vote to keep America safe, to keep America strong. It doesn't matter which you know paper doll candidate they put up. We knew what was going to happen. We had to be smarter and work harder. So that's what was going to happen in this next election. Think about it. They're already grooming Hillary Clinton. If there's anyone who's unbeatable as a leftist, I will tell you, it was Hillary Clinton. When I was on the left, I would vote for her before I would vote for Barack Obama. Obama had to pull me over. Clinton had me at hello. 
So I'm telling you, we're going to be in it for a hard fight if she's the one that they put up. So what that means is we have to be smarter, we have to start holding these politicians accountable, and we have to get them out of there. You t primary them. That is the biggest tool that we have, is to primary these guys and to let them know we mean business. I don't want Boehner and Cancer representing me in the next four years. I don't want the people who can't, I mean, my daughter's Barbie dolls, the least favorite ones, staged a better coup and got the dream house back from the favorite Barbie doll that I saw that these guys do on Capitol Hill. So all the fellow coup members, they gotta go too. I mean, I saw this, I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, it's crazy. We cannot keep letting them do this. It's a definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So right now, and I'm trying not to be vulgar, but it's time for us to man up, you know, put our boots on and go to war. But unfortunately, the war right now is within ourselves. We got to get out all these people. If you got someone and they're always divisive and shooting you down and trying to keep people fighting, they are a plant. Get them out. Don't, you know, sit there and go, oh, politeness. The time for politeness is over. You know, we've tried that. Let's just go forward, get out, let's move on. Another thing, if you can't work with a group and they don't want to share their list, apparently they don't want to save America. We need to start calling these people out. We have got to work together. That's one of the things I love about Alice. She will call you out. And she has been attacked because of it, but she has never been wrong. And I will tell you that out of the sheer confidence of knowing some of the things she's had to do to get here today. And I'm going to keep fighting alongside her because the truth is all I have. And as long as you're fighting on the side of truth, they can't push you down. They might push you, but you'll spring back up because you know we're standing right behind you to hold you up. We've got your backs, guys. If you've got a problem and you can't solve it, uh, what did, Matt, what did you say? Can we come in and help you mediate it? Can we help you out? Was that what you were talking about last night? Exactly. We are here for you. Don't think you're doing this alone. I will give my cell phone number to anyone in this room. We will get out there and fight this together. This is not usually the speech I give, guys, but I am tired. I want my country back. I want my country for my daughter. And I don't want it destroyed by these communists, these Marxists, and these people that think they're smarter than us. They're not smarter than us. We are the blood of this country. They're the ones that think something's wrong with America, and they want to fundamentally change it. That's what they say. They want to fundamentally change our country. And do you know what that looks like? Think about Soviet Russia. Think about the people coming out of communism and having to start all over. We had to bring democracy to them. Why are we having to have UN observers in our country during our elections? Because we have people that think something's wrong with us, but there's something wrong with them. Now I'm gonna open it up for some questions and I will be glad to tell you any way to go with this, but I know that we have got to come together as one big massive conservative coalition. And I'm not talking about a new acorn. Because you can still keep your individual groups, but we have to move as one, and we have to move smart. So when we make moves, we're playing chess, guys. So everyone moves with one move, and we talk to each other, and we work it out, and we make sure we're going in the right direction. I know that we're all about individualism, and you know that's all great and well, but we can be about that after we take our country back. Seriously, I tell people, let's take the country back from the Marxists and the socialists, and then we can sit around dinner and fight amongst each other, okay? Thank you. <laughs>